mistakes. Let's talk about mistakes. We're all gonna make mistakes, we make mistakes all the time, and of course, it's crucial uh, in learning. When you're learning something, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes, and that goes for the piano as well. So the key is to make the right kind of mistakes, to make what I call good mistakes instead of bad mistakes. And by good mistakes, I mean mistakes that help you get to where you wanna go, that help you improve. So what makes a good mistake? I think a good mistake when practicing the piano is one where you've tried to do something with a very clear image in mind. You've had a goal in your mind, a sound concept, uh, some idea of what it would feel like to play what you're playing, some idea of what you want it to sound like, and that then you make a mistake and that lets you analyze what you just did and figure out what went wrong. In other words, a good mistake occurs when you sort of have a feedback loop going with your practice. So here's a really uh, elementary example. If you're just starting the piano, one of the first things that you're gonna learn how to do is how to play a five finger pattern, one, two, three, four, five, say C, D, E, F, G, on the piano. And you might be at the stage where you're ready to do that. You know your finger numbers, you know your keys, you know what it's gonna sound like when you go up that five finger pattern. And so you give it a shot. And in doing that, you have this idea in your head of, okay, I want it to sound something like this. Um, I want the, you know, the notes all to be even. Um, I know what it's gonna feel like to, to move my fingers. Um, and your teacher may have coached you on some details of that kind of leading up to this point. And then you try the five finger pattern and what happens? You go one, two, three, and then you get to your fourth finger and it's very weak and it feels tight, right? And you don't get quite the sound out that you thought you were gonna get. So that's a really good mistake because what you've done is you've done something right at the edge of your ability level. Maybe you haven't played too many five finger patterns, but it's not super hard. And what that means is that you're able to isolate one little thing that's gone wrong in this mistake. There's one aspect of it that you can attend to. In this case, how you're using your fourth finger. So if you have a good teacher, they might uh, let you make that mistake and then kind of come back and say, okay, uh, let's look at that and see how we can use the fourth finger more effectively. Maybe there's a rotation or some other technical element so that you can get more of the sound you want out from that five finger pattern, all right? And then using that mistake and the knowledge that you gained from it, you can circle back around, try the five finger pattern again, and you kind of get this feedback loop going with everything that you're doing so that as you keep repeating that, as you keep practicing, uh, you're correcting and getting more in line with that image, that mental image of the sound and the feel that you wanted in playing. So that's a good example of mistake making that's helpful. And now notice there's a couple aspects here. First of all, you were practicing something just at the edge, just at the periphery of your ability level, right? So if you're just starting out, if you're trying to practice, say, a Chopin etude, it's too early. And what that means is it's even a small bit of it's going to be so complex and so difficult and have so many elements that you can't attend to that the bandwidth that it takes up is going to be enormous and you won't have automatized all the movement patterns to play even a little bit of it. And that means instead of making a mistake where you can point to just a little bit of it and correct, there's, you know, 30 mistakes that you need to attend to. You're not actually learning anything from that because it's impossible to go back to cycle back around and correct. So that's the first element, is that it's at the edge of your periphery. The second element is that it's a small enough bit of practice that you can point to a specific thing, right? So a lot of times, a big problem you see when people are practicing, um, I see this a lot in adult students who are self-taught without much training, is their idea of practice is they'll just start at the beginning of the piece and they'll play to the end of the piece. Now, in that, that's totally fine. That's an important part of some practice. But if what you're trying to do is, say, improve an element of your technique or to get really refined listening, it's really not helpful. And the reason for that is that there's probably 30, 40 things that happened just in that page that you could have corrected, right? So unless you're going to go back and look at each of those things individually, uh, it's almost, uh, well, it's not useless necessarily, but it's certainly not as useful as it could have been. And more importantly, if you're at the beginning stages of playing a piece, because there's so many things 
to work on, you can't really effectively visualize ahead as you're playing that piece. So when you're, when you're playing from the beginning of the piece all the way to the end, it's mo more likely than not, you don't have a mental image of every single thing that's about to happen, which means you can't analyze the result afterwards. And in that case, most of the mistakes that you're making are probably bad mistakes. So let's take a look really quickly um, in contrast to what a bad mistake is. A bad mistake is one where instead of having that mental image in your mind, trying and then correcting, you're, you're kind of just winging it, right? So you're just like, okay, I'm just gonna go for this and see what happens. The problem with that, in some cases, in, in some very, very, very narrow instances, that might be called for. But usually what that means is that people have no clear concept of the sounds and the feel of what they're going to do. And then when something goes wrong, they have nothing to compare it for. All they know is that didn't sound very good if they even hear that because they're probably not listening as well. And so there's no way that they can go back and correct for anything because they never got to the point of being able to say, hey, you know, my, my fourth finger sounded a little weak there. They're not even thinking in terms of those particulars. It's more just like, whew, I got to the end of the piece. I played it through. And, you know, maybe that's better than not playing at all. And certainly if your goal is to just sit down and kind of wing it through a piece, go for it. But if your goal is to really kind of improve, it's probably not or definitely not the most helpful way to do it because you're not setting up an experiment for yourself. So remember with an experiment, you want to control for all the variables, right? And you can kind of see what happens, see where your hypothesis was off. If you have a million different variables, there's nothing to analyze afterwards. So you're just kind of making these mistakes where it's just like, well, that was kind of bad. And then what happens over and over, you see this uh, when people aren't used to making the good kind of mistakes is they'll come lesson to lesson and they'll do the same thing, the same kind of errors over and over and over again. Now, I'm not trying to be negative or get down on people who have this problem because I do it myself. Like if I'm, it takes a lot of patience to make the right kind of mistakes because you have to plan ahead. You have to sit there and think, okay, I'm practicing now this. Uh, this is what I think it's going to sound like. This is what I think it's going to feel like. And it might just be half a measure. You know, say it's a particularly difficult uh, technical spot. You might have to sit there and just play four notes and notice something very small, like, oh, my thumb could be, you know, half a centimeter to the left here, and that will help me out a lot. Um, that takes a lot of patience. And if you love music, it can be, it can wear down on you to do that for too long because uh, you want to play the piece, you want to play the music and enjoy that. And so you don't just want to sit there going, oh, my thumb could move half a centimeter to the left. So what I would suggest is really spend part of your practice time doing this kind of concentrated, good mistake making, and then part of your practice time playing something that you enjoy that doesn't need quite so much focus on all, all of those details where you're just working on one little bit. And that way you'll get the best of both worlds. It won't be a total drag to practice, but you'll also have part of your practice session uh, working on the new piece uh, or the new section or the thing that needs attention. So that's good mistakes versus bad mistakes. Uh, make sure you narrow down your practice, that you focus on things that are at the edge of your boundary, uh, the edge of your playing ability, and then be able to assess what you did based on what you thought was going to happen and then get that kind of feedback loop going. And of course, if you have a good teacher to help so that you're at least sort of headed in the right direction, that's gonna give you uh, a whole lot more of a head start than if you just kind of hope it goes well. So let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear if you found this helpful and especially love to hear if there's anything you're working on right now where you can use good mistake making uh, to improve your playing. And of course, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do that every time you like. Uh, it helps the YouTube algorithm so more people can see my videos and it means a lot more to me than you might think. And please subscribe to the channel. And if you're just starting out at the piano or if you've played for a while and you want some free technique lessons, I've left a link below this video to uh, different free lessons that you can check out. All right, that's all for today. Have fun practicing and I'll see you next time.